Hi everybody and welcome to a special revision talk on externalities in production and consumption. This is obviously a key aspect of market failure and uh, government intervention in markets. It'll be useful for you to have your existing class notes to hand and uh, perhaps add in some examples, check over your, your key diagrams as we go through four examples for types of externalities in production and consumption. So what are externalities? Well, externalities are probably best defined as spillover effects or third party effects that come from production and consumption for which no appropriate compensation is paid to those affected. A really key point for the notes is that externalities lie outside of the initial market transaction and not necessarily built into the market price. And externalities can cause market failure if the price mechanism does not take into account the, the social costs and benefits of production and consumption. Key point is that externalities can be both positive and negative or negative. Indeed, many goods and services show both positive and negative externalities. And we'll look at this at the end, that the idea of net social benefit or net social cost becomes relevant there. Two common types of externalities are, first of all, negative externalities from production. This is where the marginal social cost is bigger than the marginal private cost. Classic examples being pollution. And positive consumption externalities, where when people consume a product, the social benefit at the margin of consumption is higher than the benefit to the individual concerned. Marginal social benefit bigger than marginal private benefit. Classic examples would include merit goods, such as museums and libraries, uh, perhaps the external benefits from having community access defibrillators on the streets. So we're going to take each externality in turn as we go through this presentation. Our first example is negative production externalities, classically from uh, industrial waste, fertilizers used in farming, noise and air pollution from the aviation sector, etc. Uh, the crucial point, I suppose, initially when we're thinking about externalities is first of all whether we can measure them accurately. That's often quite difficult and crucially whether or not we can actually put a price evaluation on externalities. But with negative externalities from production, the marginal social cost is greater than the marginal private cost. And we can see that in this diagram. So we have a product here where there are negative production externalities and you see the growing divergence between social and private cost. That vertical distance is the external cost. Now left to themselves, if agents only consider their own costs and benefits, we look for the equilibrium between marginal private and marginal, uh, marginal private cost and marginal private benefit, which gives output C. However, if we take into account the social cost, the social optimum is where social cost meets social benefit, and that's at output A. So in this situation, there is overproduction of the product. The social optimum level of output is lower than the private optimum. And uh, there's a triangle there, A, B, C. So in other words, if we overproduce from Q1 to Q2, we lose welfare and we call that a deadweight loss of social welfare. It's a loss of efficiency because of the overproduction. With positive consumption externalities, there is an external benefit from consumption. See here, for example, that uh, although there's a private benefit as well, if we add in the external benefit, the social benefit curve lies above the private benefit curve. And I'm suggesting with our diverging diagram that those external benefits get bigger as the quantity consumed goes up. Again, the private optimum only considers private costs and benefits. That would give us output A, whereas from a social perspective, we'd actually want more of this product to be consumed and I'm using a value judgment there, but Q2 would be more of an optimal position compared to Q1. And again, at Q1, we're missing out on some external benefits equal to AB, and indeed, the deadweight loss of welfare from underconsumption is again shown by a welfare loss diagram, a, tri a triangle ABC. So in this situation, we're underconsuming products with positive consumption externalities. And for more on this, think about our videos on merit goods and special revision sessions on positive externalities. Now, there are two other types of externality, which in particular for AQA students and in part OCR students, they make a further distinction between 
positive externalities from production and negative externalities from consumption. So I thought we'd take you through these two diagrams as well, although for other boards you don't necessarily need to use them. So with positive production externalities, uh, we're told that the marginal social cost of production is lower than the marginal private cost. In other words, uh, an agent incurs a cost, produces a good or service, but that actually lowers cost for other agents, other third parties. A good example would be, for example, construction of a new road, which might lower transport costs for local firms. Uh, consumption externalities can also be negative, and in the case of the AQA board, this is where the marginal social benefit is lower than the marginal private benefit. We're assuming here, for example, that one person's consumption imposes a negative benefit on another person. For example, the impact on family life, social cohesion, of the growing issues of problem gambling or drug addiction. So let's work through these two diagrams as well. So first of all, look at negative consumption externalities. Here, the marginal social benefit is lower, is below the marginal private benefit. So left to themselves, agents will consume output Q2 at point C, where the marginal private cost equals the marginal private benefit. However, that incurs a negative benefit of CB on other people. The social optimum is a lower output Q1, where social cost and social benefit interact. And again, there's a deadweight loss of social welfare arising from overconsumption of products with negative consumption externalities. And good examples include things like household waste, gambling addictions we've mentioned, litter, fly tipping, for example, uh, the disutility of uh, of the effects of passive smoking, for example, if you're in a restaurant or if you're in an outdoor space, somebody else is smoking nearby to you. Some people think that's an external cost. Others think it creates a negative benefit to the third party affected. And finally, in our four-way look at externalities, positive production externalities. This happens when the production of a good or service lowers a cost for another agent, a third party, such that the social cost curve lies below the private cost curve. Again, the private optimum is at point A, where private benefit and private cost intersect, but there is a, a, a positive spillover of AC, which lowers costs for other firms. And ideally, we'd want to be at a higher output, output B, <coughs> pardon me, where marginal social cost uh, is taken into account. So again, under in this case, under production leads to a deadweight loss of social welfare. When it comes to evaluating externalities, a couple of key points. One is that externalities do lie outside of market transactions. And that's really quite important when you come on to intervention because interventions such as a, a Pigouvian pollution tax or a carbon tax or carbon trading or maybe a, a subsidy of uh, something which causes a positive externality, those interventions are designed to internalise external costs and benefits to bring them into the market price to therefore affect the behaviour of consumers and businesses. Externalities involve a divergence of private and social cost and benefit. That divergence is not necessarily linear. It can be much bigger at higher levels of output and that might be a factor when you're drawing your diagrams. Some externalities are broadly speaking relatively trivial. A little bit of noise pollution here or there isn't going to change the world. But some are significant. Many of them, of course, are related to, to climate change. Nick Stern, for example, has argued that global warming is the biggest market failure the world has ever seen. A really important, extremely important evaluation point is that most goods and services have both positive and negative externalities. So, for example, if the government subsidises consumption of a product with positive externalities, a merit good, for example, it might also create some negative externalities, perhaps in production. So you have to think about the net social benefit or the net social cost. Let's do that in our last, last diagram. Here's a situation where uh, notice that MSC is greater than MPC. <clears throat> the social cost is greater than the private cost. So that suggests them some negative production externalities. But the MSB, the social benefit, is higher than the MPB. So that suggests there are some positive externalities in consumption. Now the private optimum is where private cost and private benefit intersect. That's at point A, giving output Q1. The social optimum, of course, 
is where social benefit meets social cost. That's at point C, and that gives a lower output Q2. So in this situation, we have both negative externalities in production and positive externalities in consumption. While in fact there's a net loss of social welfare in this example, it's costing society more to produce these units than society is actually valuing these units. In other words, the external costs, the way that I've drawn the diagram, appear to be bigger than the external benefits. So overall, we probably want output of this product to be lower, closer towards Q2, than at Q1. Key valuation point, in most situations, there are going to be both positive and negative externalities. And the key thing is the significance of each and the valuation of each. Oftentimes it's very hard to value externalities because some things don't have a, a, an accurate market price. Look out for our revision video, which we're going to be looking adding uh, shortly on ways in which you can cut carbon emissions. Lots of different strategies and different policies have been chosen around the world. And we're going to do a special video focusing on that. Of course, this is clearly linked to the whole issue of externalities and market failure. But for now, thanks for joining in this revision video.